Hello, my friends, and uh, today is a special day because we've got a Q and A, and um, I'm going to be talking about the spoke shave, and this is either everybody's friend or everybody's enemy. So we're going to try and demystify some of the things that cause the issues, cause the problems, and get you to where you can adjust your spoke shave and use it without the, the hiccups that people seem to be facing. And there are different problems, but people are asking for advice. And these uh, first few here, I'm going to talk to, to Dan Holiday in Texas, which he has sent his question and he says, which is the most versatile spoke shave? Which one will accomplish more tasks than the others? And which ones are your favorites? Well, for me, it's not a one size fits all, but I do think that the Stanley record, the uh, Veritas has one that's based on this. Uh, and basically this is where we have a bevel down spoke shave. So that means when it's held in this position, the blade is inserted. It means the bevel is on the underside of the blade. I find this a very versatile spoke shave. If you said, is this the very best spoke shave? I might say I'm not sure because it depends on what I'm going to do with the spoke shave. And I'm hoping we'll clear some of that while we're doing it. So my first choice would be the 151 uh, flat bottom spoke shave, not the round bottom spoke shave. And we're going to cover that. In this next question, Steve from Green Bay in Wisconsin, when would I use a curved bottom spoke shave as opposed to a flat bottomed? Uh, this question is a very, very common question and people often buy them in pairs and often they're sold as pairs because people advise people to get a round bottom and a flat bottom. And in reality, that's probably good advice. It depends on how, how much of a curve you're going to do. On large radiuses, uh, you can use a flat bottom spoke shave perfectly well without any issue at all. So uh, that would do something maybe this wide and maybe an inch deep. A flat bottom spoke shave will shave out the bottom of that uh, curve very well. It's when you get to this one where it gets a little bit tighter. This is a four inch radius and this is where it starts to become a problem for the flat bottom because when you place the spoke shave in here, the flat bottom spoke shave is suspended between this point, the fore edge of the spoke shave and the back edge of the spoke shave which means to get it to work, you have to have the blade protruding quite a lot. As soon as the blade protrudes a lot, then you have stammer in the surface, you have chatter, you have a variety of things because the blade is unsupported. It's not supported as firmly as it could be. However, if you take a round bottom spoke shave like this one, and it's got no support on either side, you find yourself having to adjust the spoke shave, and sometimes that's not as successful as you had hoped it would be. So on a tight curve, the round bottom spoke shave does work well. So four inches in diameter or less, it would work fairly well. Let me show you what I've done with my spoke shave, and you see if you feel you want to do this with yours. This is a round bottom spoke shave. And but what I've done is I've filed across the fore part, so between the blade and about a quarter of an inch in, I filed it flat. That shortened the length of the sole. And I found, let me show you, that when I'm using the spoke shave, I can go in and I can take perfectly good shaved parts. Of course, you have to go into the bottom and work from both sides. But I can get perfectly good shavings using this spoke shave. So it works perfectly. Whereas on the flat bottom spoke shave, I would be struggling and I would have to have the blade protruding quite a lot to get there. So this one is perfect. This is one I've adjusted. Now this one will cut, but it tends to chatter. So this one now is chattering in the surface. If I go in with this one, I don't have that chatter. So I get a good finish and that's what I would recommend you might want to do with your round bottom. The other thing is I can still do flat surfaces with this. So I can still use this spoke shave this way as I can even with the flat bottom on it, it's fine, no problem. But when it comes to the round bottom, I can do it, but I'm constantly flexing 
and trying to get the surface to be in contact with the blade, or the blade in, in contact with the surface, and I have nothing to steady it. I hope that helps. So this one is from Joe Pastuczak from Lincoln, Nebraska in the US. What would a good beginner spoke shave be? Definitely a, a 151 model. It doesn't have to be Stanley. It doesn't have to be record. It could be a more up-to-date version. It could be another maker, a more modern maker that might have put more effort into put, coming up with a, a well-engineered um, piece. But really, I don't think you should spend more than 40 or 50 pounds on a spoke shave. And the Stanley and the records usually go for about anywhere between 15 and 20 and they're definitely going to be a usable spoke shave after you've fettled it. So that's a great choice, 151. The, one, uh, the uh, other models may not have the adjusters on them. I do like the adjusters. So by the adjusters, I mean these two points here. These adjust the blade up and down through the throat, and I like those, but you don't have to have them. Okay. Uh, and if you don't have them, you've got to use a hammer tap or slacken things to adjust them. If you were going to own two spoke, show, spoke shaves, what would they be? Well, adjusting mine like this, you get two spoke shaves in one, and this will do just about everything you ever want to do. So I might recommend a, a metal spoke shave with my adjust, adjustment to it there, my adaptation. And then I might suggest a flat bottom one. You can pick these up fairly inexpensively, and if they're in good shape, a wooden spoke shave, it's just a different tool altogether. It does do the same tasks, but between the two, you should be able to tackle any job with that. So a wooden spoke shave like this one would be fine. Also, we've got a how to make this one, which is a wooden spoke shave, very similar to that with adjusters in this case. So this is a poor man's spoke shave, and that you can find out how to make on my YouTube channel. Okay. Joe, oh, we've got that. We've answered that one. Jeff Rogers, uh, I have a Millis Falls number one uh, cigar spoke shave and find it almost impossible to get shavings from. Do you have input on adjusting and also sharpening the blade? I really don't. I've really, I've never used one, so I can't advise you. I have looked at them and I've often wondered how easy they would be to sharpen and to set up and to use. So. I can't really advise you on that. I'm very sorry, Jeff. I wish I could. And Eddie Maryland, is your blade sharpening straight across or does it have a slight crown side to side like some smoothing planes? I go square across because most of my work is square across and it relies on being square across. So I probably would not camber the blade because it's very different to, uh, to using it for, mostly we use it on edges or on uh, convexes, concaves. We don't usually use it, on, use it on wide surfaces, whereas the plane blade is being used across a wide board. It just, the crowning just feathers it in from each side as you work across. You don't have to do that with a spoke shave very often. We usually don't do wide flat surfaces with a spoke shave. Uh, this is Ben Bunting, Somerville, South Carolina. I have my spoke shave bevel at 30 degrees. Would 25 degrees be better? That's a great question because what I've found is that um, when people sharpen their spoke shaves, there's a tendency to go even steeper. So instead of staying at 30 degrees, they go to 35 and 40 degrees. And when you put that in relationship to, let me plot this on here. When you put the flat bottom spoke shave in relation to that, you have an angle here that's probably around 45 degrees. So the more bevel you put on, the steeper the bevel you put on, the more you're making it commensurate to this angle. And what I've often found is that the, the actual cutting edge, people will round that very fore part of the cutting edge on the bevel side, and that stops the blade from having contact with the surface. So I would say generally, Go for the 25 degrees, keep that bevel ground at 25 degrees, and then just lift up for a couple of strokes, put the convex camber on, which is the camber on the back of the blade, the one I use for my planes, and then use the spoke shave, and just keep on top of it. The tendency is to overcompensate uh, on, the, on the second bevel, on the, on the micro bevel, if you want to call the secondary bevel, 
and that stops the blade from cutting. So that's what I would do. Always aim for 25 and then just lift up two or three degrees and you'll have a good uh, working spoke shape blade. Jeff Black from Central California. How do you sharpen wooden spoke shaves? The blades seem so different from the cast iron spoke shaves, which I have, which have blades like small planes. Okay, I understand that, and, and really what we do with this spoke shave, now this one's fully adjusted, and I don't want to put it back and adjust it, so well, let me see if I can pull one out here. You tap your iron out here, just using a, a, a hammer, a, a light hammer like this, wiggle it out, put your block of wood in the vise, put your piece of wood on here, and then take a piece of wood with some abrasive paper, that's what I've got in my hand here, and then run it along here, like this, and work in a circular motion, and you can get the exact bevel for the 25 degrees, which is fine, and then you can increase by either lifting this up or moving this paddle further along here, and that gets you the, 25, uh, the 30 degree bevel. So that's how I would sharpen mine. The underside is once you've initialized this and you've got this polished out, you don't have to touch that again except just to remove the burr, which you can do with a strop, pulling it on the strop, and you'll have a sharp edge. Okay. John Bauer from Gaithersburg, Maryland, US. When do you push and pull? When do you when do you push versus pull the tool? Mostly that's according to the grain. So if you're working on wood grain and you're, you get like here, I've got knots and um, I might be going along with any one of the spoke shaves here. Go along here. This is working fine. I don't have any stammer. And then I come to the knot and I've got tear out. So I might turn this around here and, oh, look what happened. So I'm going against the grain. That's a great example there. I couldn't have engineered that better. So I'm going against the grain. Rather than turn my body or my piece of wood around, I turn and I correct it by going in the opposite direction. There are times when you're working on concaves like this, where you're going down this way into the cut, and then you come down this way into the cut, and rather than change my body or turn myself around, I would work in both directions. So I would work that way, and that's generally uh, how I work it. So I work it that way the whole time, and I actually often do that with bench planes too. So if I was using just my bench plane, I come to that kind of grain we just met there at that far end, I might turn around and come this way and do it on the pull stroke. That's very common for me, and I think it's common for a lot of the old woodworkers that I used to work with. Okay, now then, uh, Daryl Carson from Sprague River, Oregon, USA. How do you prevent chatter that is a result of the small surface area on the base of the spoke shave? My favorite thing is to lubricate. So let me see if I've got a spoke shave that will give me a problem. So I'm, I'm using this spoke shave now I use the, oil, the rag in a can oiler, which I've used for 50 years. It's the best thing I've ever come across for planes. And this technically is a plane. So it's got the sole, just go across the surface here. And now it totally transformed, even in that short uh, session there, it transformed this spoke shave. So a quick wipe with that, and that takes care of the first primary cause of chatter, if we're calling it chatter, which usually is scudding, not chatter, because the blade, what the, the phenomenon of chatter is when the blade is bending and flexing back and forth and causes an iterant action in the surface of the wood by the blade keep flexing back and forth. So scudding is probably more a typical answer for that. So uh, that's the first one I would do. Then I might check my depth of cut. That would be another one that would cause, let, let me overset this like this. That's not doing it. So there I'm getting it now. So I've got this tear out on the surface. So that's because the blade was ex extended too far beyond the plane body. 
So back off the iron, keep going. A little bit more. Once I've got that done, I advance the, once it's not cutting, advance it and there we have it. So now we've taken care of the chatter. I, I think that will be the answer. And now this is a fellow called Paul. That is a wonderful name you've got, Paul, uh, in Toronto. Are there any issues with having a spoke shave set for a light shave on one side, on one end? I think what he means is when he set the plane, the, the blade, he's got a light cut on this end and a heavy set on the other side, which was very common. That was how we used to and still do. Uh, you set this, eye, this side here heavy and this one light and that means you can take a heavy cut on this side followed by a light cut for refinement and that's what we also do with this type of spoke shave so often I will set one side heavy there's my heavy cut and then here's my light cut it's a bit light it's very light there so I've got my light cut and I can refine my cut and I can work anywhere between the heavy cut and the light cut when you do get a problem is if you're consistently taking passes here without moving the plane, you will end up taking more and more and you'll end up with a beveled edge. That would be the, um, the conflict there if there is a conflict. So generally, if we do want to parallel and we've got a lot to hog off, we set the plane, bar the uh, spoke shape parallel. How do I get, uh, this is uh, Jack Hessian from Galway, Ireland. I love Galway. I'll be, I'll be glad to come there whenever you want me. How do I get an extremely fine cut when shaping curves? Okay, it's all to do with set, really. Um, however, having said that, when we set the spoke shave, let's say now I've got a heavy cut on one side. I can go in and I can really light... See, they, these are onion skin thicknesses, but I didn't alter the set of the spoke shave. What I did is I tilted it forward Using my muscle, I suspend the blade from cutting. If I want a heavy cut, I just press harder. So you get used to that sensitivity, develop sensitivity, and that's what woodworking is 90% about. The spoke shave is not bulldogged to task. It's not heavy, uh, unfeeling. It's always to do with sensitivity and feeling for that cut. That's what you want. You want to get that sensitivity going in your life. Oh, right. Richard from Virginia. Is there a modification or adjustment to keep chips from getting jammed under the blade? Big one, this, this, this uh, jamming shavings is a biggie. So when we have this spoke shave and uh, we've got the, the, the blade is sitting fine, there's no problem there. What it is, is it's this underside edge here that's... Uh, got a, a, an open edge on the very front edge. So what you do with this is back this out so it's not protruding. Set it on the stone and on on a coarse stone and just let me see if I can and just rub it so that you get light coming on here. Now I've got light on the back edge of this, but when this is actually in position, this. Uh, screw needs to be protruding about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to rub this lightly like this. And now I'm right on that front edge. I've got light along this front edge, even here. So if I take this and keep going at this, I don't want to wear the screw down too much. So I could put a piece of wood under there at one eighth. Now I've got light going across the whole band apart from this left hand side. So I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit more. Oops. And I feel like I've got enough support there along that back edge. So when I reload this, back this back out, slide it into there and elevate this end. There should be a gap between this end. We don't use this to, to tighten the blade in there. We use it as a counter cantilever so that when we, pre when we turn this set screw here, the fore edge of that blade is going down onto the surface of the blade on the back of the blade. So there we've got it and we're ready. 
and that should chop uh, stop the shavings from uh, the uh, feather edge of the shaving going in behind the cap iron. Okay, this is from Dennis in Moscow in Russia. How do I keep the spoke shave so parallel to the flat surface at the correct angle to the curved surface to get consistent shaving? So curved surface, what does that mean? Does he mean curved as in a hollow or curved as in a round? Uh, it looks like I have to apply some force to tilt it a bit forward, but my hands don't feel when my hands don't feel when it is in the correct position. Thank you. Okay, I'll try and answer this one. I'm not sure if I will, but I'm going to try. It is about pressure. Here I've got a flat sole. No, yeah, I'm going to use this one because this is now my favourite. So, when I'm using the spoke shave. It isn't about hard pressure, it's more about light pressure. It's also about applying the rag oiler on that surface. So what's happening here, you see there's no one answer for this because often we're going this way and I've reduced the friction so I know that's not the problem but I can feel a little undulation. So what I might do is skew this so I get a skew cut which is the optimum cut you can get with any plane or tool is that pairing action. So this is very equivalent to a pairing action. I get a very nice clean cut. Now I'm handling this, I'm holding this spoke shave firmly, but not bulldogging it to task. So I'm very careful not to over grip this spoke shave. So I get that. And then in the hollow again, light setting on the plane iron, spoke shave iron. And feel for that edge. So I do feel for the edge. Now I've got to use a lot of pressure, but it's firm pressure, and I'm being sensitive as to when I ease up and when I put more pressure on. It's just practice, really, Dennis. Okay, Conrad Vedern, Vedern in Canada. Hi, Paul. I've noticed your perf you perform straight planing with the spoke shave over, over wood wider than the blade and you get super thin shavings. Can you explain how to set the spoke shave to do this? Yep, good question here. A narrow piece of wood in the vise, doesn't matter which spoke shave we use really. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the blade up into the body of the spoke shave till we're taking no shaving on either side. Then we're gonna turn these knobs here, the adjusters, till they are Take, all the slack is taken up, and we keep turning what equally and trying one side and then the other. So I'm getting no shaving here. Now I'm getting a little bit of a shaving on that one side and a little bit of a shaving on the other side. Very thin shavings. So I'm working either side. Now I feel like a little bit more on this side. And that's how I would set my spoke shave. So I can take uh, a wider cut. Well, maybe I should do a wider cut. Maybe this will work. And remember also, keep going back to this oiler because it really makes a huge difference. So now I've got a wide shaving off this piece of wood and it's working fine. So that's how I would do it. That's what I would do to it. Okay, Alex in Twyford. I recently bought a wooden spoke shave and often find the blade works itself loose after a few passes. I close the mouth of the plane as much as possible but still find after a few passes it opens up again. What that means is that this blade, these two tangs here, have worn into the hole a little bit more as they've been tapped in and out over the years. So it's unfortunate when that happens because it's a little difficult to get to adjust them. So what you do is, well, there are two options. One, you can reheat this area of the spoke shave in the fire and then anneal and soften it. And then you'll be able to tap one of these either in or out to increase the friction on the side of the, the uh, hole that the square tang goes into. My favorite thing to do is to put a piece of very dense grained wood in there, just a slither really, like a wedge, 
in the extreme of the hole, I'm thinking this side here on one side only. So adding a little bit of wood in there will increase the friction and use some uh, five ton epoxy to glue it in there. Then take a rasper, a file should I say, chisel and chisel it down until this fits in, until it goes to about that position. So it's protruding past the face of the sole of the plane of the spoke shape. And then as you start tapping it, see what you need to take off until it sets nicely for you. Great, good questions everybody, good questions. Couple more here, Reese in Memphis, Tennessee, why are there two blade adjustment screws? Good question, this is, I think we've already actually answered that by adjusting one side and the other, we can offset the plane iron to the, or the spoke shave iron to the face of the sole or we can have it perfectly parallel. That's what these adjusters do. Some spoke shaves don't have the, adjust, the adjusters uh, and, and you have to either, you can either tap with the hammer on both corners like this, or you can loosen this and just move it with your fingertips. The tap method is better, just a simple tap. And Robert, Roberto Fisher in Rio de Janeiro. Are new cheap generic spoke shaves restorable? If not, what makes them unusable? I regret getting one of these, but it was also crazy cheap. So this information would help me understand what to look for in good ones. Okay, over the years, I have seen spoke shaves uh, on the economy end come to market. And um, I've actually found that they can be worked. They don't usually come straight from the manufacturer, uh, whichever, country they're made in, wherever they are. Uh, so you do have to fettle them and you have to work on them to get them right. But I think that it's simple enough and we have enough information out there on my blog or on YouTube or wherever for you to be able to restore one of those spoke shows. So please uh, uh, try and find that information there. Uh, we put as much out as we know to put it out there. So this is a great question. Yes, they can be uh, fettled and they can be made to work just as good as any other. But I will say this, not always. There may be one that's just a put that you cannot, you cannot resolve. This one's from Robert in Utrecht in the Netherlands. I have a couple of wooden spoke shaves that I have trouble getting to work. The sole of these spoke shaves are quite worn out, so the mouth is very wide. I can't seem to uh, get the thin shavings. I have found uh, that I have found any, I haven't found any that don't have this, so can't figure it out if this is down to my technique or the tool. My question is, how can you tell when the sole of a wooden spoke shave needs fixing, and how do you set the blade properly to get the thin shavings? That's another good question, because if you notice on this type of spoke shave, on the wooden spoke shave, there's actually a hollow in this surface, the same in this one. This one actually, no, that's, that's wrong. This one's got a perfectly flat sole. Uh, no, no, it has got a slight hollow. This one's more evident, so we'll work with this one. And the reason is, this is what this area here is what we call a relief area. So when we offer the spoke shave to the wood, it means the cutting edge is right on in there and there's nothing at the back holding the cutting edge from cutting the surface of the wood. So it's perfect. So on this, for instance, you can see how this works. I've got very nice thick shave, uh, wide shavings and it's working perfectly. But what happens is this edge here sometimes starts to get rounded on the leading edge, which means the blade is too far down, which means we have to tap it out to get a shaving of any kind. And then we have this bevel on the underside, which is constantly pushing the spoke shave up as the, as the spoke shave progresses into cut, it's, li it's lifting off. So that's probably the problem. I don't know if you can see this, but on this bevel here, there's a bevel from this point here, a bevel leaning forward. So this leans forward ever so slightly. So there might be uh, a 1 16th lower area here than here on the, on the spoke shave. So that means that we do tend to want to lean in until we feel it bite and then we follow through with the cut as we progress that cut. And that's the 
question, I think. My question is, how can you tell this is all wooden from? Well, again, another thing is that sometimes this area here gets very worn out. And what you have to do is just take a, a, a gauge and make a mark here and make a mark here, cut a rebate in here, glue another piece of comparable wood. This is beech, so I would put beech on there. And then you can reshape this to get the spoke. You can close the mouth up for one thing, and you can also get the spoke shape to work well again. Okay, Robert. Joe from San Francisco in California, USA. Is the blade inserted bevel up or bevel down? Whoa, this is such an issue. Sometimes I will buy a spoke shave on eBay and it does come with the blade upside down. And when you get it, you think, ah, oh, this is a bevel up spoke shave. So I'm going to use it with the bevel up, which means it's protruding out of the sole way too much. So I'm backing my iron off and then we'll see what we've got. So here, my spoke shave is upside down and you can see what happens. This gives me the corrugation. It looks like a corrugated roof in Texas in the summer. So what we do, just simply take the blade out, flip it over. This is a bevel down spoke shave. The wooden ones are 99.9% .9 always a bevel up spoke shave. You've seen me take this apart. You saw me sharpening it. That meant the bevel was on the top. That is the only one way you can get this one in. Okay, so this is the only one that you can really put bevel in the wrong way so you can have it on the top. If it's just never going, it will never cut that way. You'll never get it to cut. So you know it's the wrong way up if it just won't cut. Flip it over, put the bevel down and you're on your way. This is from Lois uh, in France, and uh, he's talking about the Stanley spoke shave I per he purchased online. It's a bit rough. Ooh. Yep, they do come rough. They've always come rough. Since 1965, as far as I know, most Stanley tools have come rough. You have to fettle all of their tools when they come to you. I'm talking about edge tools, planes, spoke shaves, that kind of thing. And um, so whenever you got one, when I was an apprentice, we got the spoke shave. I put it to the wood. It always jumped and chattered and scudded and gouged and did everything. And then George would say to me, come on, Paul, let me show you what we do. So what you do is you take the blade out, take these off, take this off, and then you try to flatten in here as best you can with a... Uh, a piece of, uh, with a file or whatever you can. The trouble is there's not much room to get a file in, so it has to be super thin. If you can't do that, just take a slither of wood like this, glue a pad onto it, and this will then go through that throat and you can flatten this surface quite nicely. Try not to rock it, get it nice and flat, and that's the first step, and after that, there's really only the sole that you might need to work on. This is a round uh, spoke shave, so I'd put that slight flat on the leading edge. I would like, I would prefer just to have one spoke shave rather than two. Uh, the blade needs sharpening, of course, and uh, we give enough information on sharpening because it's the same for the spoke shave, pretty much identical. And then, of course, you've got to do this fettling on the backside, on the underside of the cap iron. And then you've got to get this right. A lot of times, I think I already mentioned it before on another question, but a lot of times people will set this and this has gone to the extreme and it's still not the, locked the blade in. So I'm going to back off this set screw here, this adjustment screw, and then I'm going to turn this center screw here in. But it's, this is not to tighten the blade in, it's just to give that counter lever. So now when I turn this, it's pressing the fore part of the blade by having a gap on this back edge. So after that, it's just a question of adjusting the cutting iron as we showed you, uh, and then you're ready to start cutting your wood. So thank you for all the questions. We had so many questions, but these we feel address the key questions, the core issues that people are really struggling with. So I hope this has helped you. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you get your spoke shaves out, fettle them, and enjoy them for the rest of your life.